Hey guys, what's up? Today we'll be talking about the four different endgame armors and how to craft each of them. Keep in mind that these are all obtainable only post Plantera or Golem. Each one has its own perks and gives useful buffs for the class that you're playing. Let's get into it. First off, we have the Beetle Armor. Not only will you look awesome, but you'll feel awesome as well. This armor set is for melee users specifically and turns you into a straight up tank. Unlike the other armor sets that are available immediately after Plantera is defeated, this endgame armor is only available after Golem. Sorry melee users. Good news though, it's worth it. Crafting the beetle armor requires two things, the turtle armor set and exactly 18 beetle husks dropped from the golem. If you're in normal mode, you'll have to fight it multiple times since he only drops 4-8 to eight husks per death. However, in expert and master mode he drops 18-23 to 23 husks, making one fight enough to craft the armor. If you want to craft the other beetle items, the beetle minecart and wings, you'll have to fight him twice. On the other hand, the turtle armor is an armor set that can be crafted using chlorophyte bars and exactly 3 turtle shells, one for each body part. Shells have an 8.33% chance of dropping from giant tortoises. This may seem like a high chance, but giant tortoises can be pretty rare, although it's not much of a grind. After using chlorophyte bars and turtle shells to craft the turtle armor, combine it with beetle husks to make the beetle armor, plain and simple. Here are a couple of pointers about what you need to know about this armor. There are two different chest plates that you can craft that grant different buffs, depending on what you like more. You can either make the beetle scale mail or the beetle shell. The scale mail offers 20 defense, much lower than the defense of the beetle shell, but offers a plethora of damage buffs that the shell doesn't. On the other side, the shell offers 32 defense, way higher than the scale mail, but doesn't offer the same damage buffs. Depending on which chest plate you pick, the set bonus for wearing the whole armor set is different. Choosing the scale mail gives a massive 10-30% increase in melee damage and speed when you hit an enemy. Choosing the shell gives a massive 15-45% to increase in damage reduction when you didn't receive damage for at least 3 seconds straight. Whichever path you choose, wearing a full set will also create an awesome effect of having beetles flying around you, indicating the set bonus damage buffs from the scale mail or the set bonus damage reduction bonus from the shell. Another aspect of the beetle armor is that wearing even one piece will cause enemies to target you more often. This doesn't really matter too much in single player worlds, but it does in multiplayer. While it's technically a debuff, it actually can help with multiplayer fights a lot since the boss will be targeting you while your lower defense but higher damage ranger, mage, and summoner friends will be shredding its health. This armor is also so tanky that with a full beetle armor and shell, equipping the worm scarf, endurance potion, and frozen turtle shell will reduce damage taken by 74%. Drink a life force potion too and it's even possible to survive a hit from the dungeon guardian. Now if this isn't melee, I don't know what is. Second, we have the Shroomite armor. This armor set is for rangers specifically and has the most awesome look out of all the four armors in my opinion. Similar to how you can choose a chest plate that fits your needs for the beetle armor, you can do the same thing with Shroomite armor. There are three different headpieces, the headgear, mask, and helmet. The headgear boosts arrow and stake damage by 1.15 times. This goes great if you decide to use a Tsunami, Eventide, Aerial Bane, or Phantasm. For those who don't know what stakes are, they are a specific type of ammunition dropped by the morning wood and only serve as ammo for the stake launcher. Using the stake is a good idea for invasions like the Old One's Army or the Frost and Pumpkin Moon since it has high damage and pierces through 10 enemies at a time. But for bosses, I would stick to one of the late hard mode bows. Next, the Shroomite Mask boosts bullet damage by 1.15 times. This means guns like the Vortex Beater, Mega Shark, Uzi, and more. It also boosts the damage of candy corns, a type of ammo only used by the candy corn rifle. Just like the stake launcher, it does good damage and ricochets off walls and pierces too, making it great for invasions. Third and final headpiece you can choose from is the Shroomer Helmet. It boosts damage of any rocket themed weapons by 1.15 times. Two of my favorite rocket themed weapons at this stage of the game are the Electrosphere Launcher from the Martian Madness and the Snowman Cannon. Unlike arrow themed weapons and bullet themed weapons, rocket themed weapons for rangers only become available in mid hard mode. No matter which headpiece you use, the whole set provides the player with 51 defense, plus 13% range damage, plus 25% range critical strike chance, plus 20% chance to not consume ammo, and plus 12% movement speed. The set bonus for wearing the whole set is the same regardless of the headpiece you choose. Equipping the whole armor set and not moving allows the player to automatically enter stealth mode, which grants the following effects. Near invisibility, enemies are less likely to target you, plus 60% range damage, plus 10% range or critical strike chance, and plus 50% knockback. Moving after entering stealth mode will cause the effects to quickly fade. In multiplayer, this mode can be a lot more useful than single player, since if you are low, you can go in a corner and run away from the fight and enter stealth mode to heal a lot quicker, since standing still heals you faster than moving. 
Enemies will be less likely to target you, opposite of the beetle and turtle armor, and you'll have massive damage and knockback buffs in case something decides to come at you. Crafting the armor is a bit of a process since it doesn't require too much grinding, unless you count waiting for mushrooms to grow as grinding. All you need for shroomite armor is shroomite bars, which is crafted by mixing one glorified bar with 15 glowing mushrooms. It takes 54 shroomite bars to craft the whole armor set, meaning 54 times 15 mushrooms, which is a grand total of 810 glowing mushrooms. On top of this, if you want to obtain any other shroomite gear, such as the hoverboard, digging claw, nukes, and more, you're going to need a lot more glowing mushrooms. Because of this, I suggest farming glowing mushrooms as early as possible if you're playing ranger. The shroomite bars also need to be crafted in an auto hammer, a unique workbench that's sold by the truffle NPC for one platinum coin. The truffle NPC doesn't spawn naturally and can only be obtained in hard mode after a house is made for him in an artificially made above ground glowing mushroom biome. For a quick guide on this, check out my video on how to get the truffle NPC to spawn, linked in the description. Now onto the third set, we have the spectre armor. This armor is designed for mages and, just like the other two armor sets, has different variations depending on which headpiece you use. There are two different headpieces, the hood and the mask. Like the beetle armor, one is more damage based while the other is more defense based. The mask gives the player 18 defense, 60 increased mana, plus 30% reduced mana cost, and plus 10% increased the magic damage and critical strike chance. On the other hand, the hood gives a mere 6 defense and... Yeah, that's it. But don't worry, the reason the hood just gives a small amount of defense is because it also secretly inflicts lifesteal on your enemies which isn't listed in the tooltip of the item. For every hit on an enemy, a little white healing orb will spawn and heal the player for a little health. In constant combat, you'll be constantly and steadily healing yourself during the entire fight on average by 30 to 36 health per second. The amount that you get healed is based off the damage of your magic projectiles, so the more damage that you do, the more that you will heal. On top of this, the Spectre Mask also releases orbs, but they are damaging instead of healing. Overall, both of these headpieces are good and cater to different playstyles. To craft Spectre Armor, all you need is Spectre Bars. Unlike Beetle and Shroomite, Spectre is a lot easier to craft. All you need is Chlorophyte mixed with Ectoplasm from the post Plantera Dungeon. 1-2 to two Ectoplasm is a guaranteed drop from Dungeon Spirits, which are uncommon but not too hard to find. If you're having a hard time surviving in the post Plantera Dungeon, I would recommend making a house at the dungeon entrance and setting your spawn at a bed. While farming Ectoplasm, you're also bound to get many other useful items. Examples for magic weapons that you might get are the Magnet Spear Tome, the Shadow Beam Staff, Spectre Staff, and Inferno Fork. Overall, it takes 54 Spectre Bars to make a whole armor set, although you may want to get more for items such as the Spectre Hammocks, Pickaxe, Paint Tools, and Wings. If you're down to grind some more Ectoplasm, the best way to use this armor is to make both the Hood and the Mask, and while in combat, switch between them depending on your health. One of the best late game weapons to pair with this set is the Razor Pine, allowing you to shred bosses and constantly keep your health up. If you are at max health and wearing the hood, healing orbs will heal nearby teammates and multiplayer as well. One very important thing to keep in mind when fighting the Moon Lord with this armor is that the hood is basically useless against it, since the Moon Bite debuff inflicted by the Moon Lord disables any kind of lifesteal. And now, number 4, the Spooky Armor. This set is meant to be the penultimate armor for summoners in Terraria, only beaten by the post Moon Lord Stardust armor. There are no variants for this armor set. Wearing the full set provides the following buffs. 30 defense, plus 4 minion slots, plus 58% minion damage, and plus 20 movement speed. Combining this armor with other minion damage and slot buff accessories and potions can increase minion damage by over 100% and allow the player to summon a max of 11 minions. Specifically, some of the best accessories are the Necromantic Scroll, dropped by the Morningwood, Hercules Beetle, sold by the Witch Doctor, Summoner Emblem, dropped by the Wall of Flesh, and Papyrus Scarab, a combination of the Necromantic Scroll and Hercules Beetle. The whole set of spooky armor takes exactly 750 spooky wood to make. The wood is dropped mainly from morning wood, during the pumpkin moon, and from slenderlings as well. It can be used to make Halloween themed furniture as well. And that's it, those are 4 pre moon lord endgame armors that you're gonna need to craft to beat the moon lord and sail through late hard mode. Which one is your favorite? Comment down below your thoughts and don't forget to drop a like and sub if you enjoyed. See you guys next time.